Hello there and welcome to Lower 6 Maths A Level Practice Paper B. Here we're working on question 13, a circles question. So we have a equation of a circle that's called C and we've got P, Q and R that are points on the circle. L1, L2 and L3 are tangents to the circle. Okay, so part A looks for us to find the centre and the radius for, um, for the circle C. So the easiest way of doing this is to complete the square of this uh, equation up here. One for the x variable, once for the y variable. So for the x squared minus 8x, it's going to be x minus 4, because that's half of 8. And then we take away 16, because we've got to square that x minus 4, hence completing the square. Uh, plus y plus 5 squared from the halving the 10 and it'd be take away 25 and then add on the 1 and we get a 0 and then what I'll need to do then is take all of my numbers over to the other side I get y plus 5 squared equals 40 okay great so from here and comparing this to the standard equation of a circle um, if my centre is AB and my radius is R, then my um, centre here is going to be uh, 4 from the A. It's a minus here, so the formulas match up. It's going to be minus 5 for the B part of it, so it's the negative of whatever we are um, doing to the X or the Y. And then seeing as R squared is equal to 40, the radius here must be the square root of 40, uh, to make these formulas match up. So square root 40, I believe that's the same as uh, 2 root 10. Great, okay, part B is given that the x coordinate of Q is 10. So this has a 10 something coordinate. Uh, and that the gradient of AQ is positive, okay, positive gradient there. Uh, find the y coordinate of Q explaining your solution. Okay, so I think the reason why it's mentioning here that the gradient of AQ is positive is because when you plug in X equals 10, you are going to get two solutions, one that's down here and one that's up here. Um, so what we need is when we find these two coordinates here, the two Y values, we're going to need to take the most, uh, the, the largest one or the most positive one. They'll both be negative, but the closest one to zero. Right, so plug in x equals 10 because that was the 10 coordinate. So 10 minus 4 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals 40. Now let's do a few bits of maths here. So 10 take away 4 is 6. 6 squared is 36. 40 take away 36. And we're left with the number 4. Okay, moving up to this right-hand side of the page here. Square root both sides now. Remember that whenever you square root, you get positive and negative. So it's positive and negative square root of 4, which is 2. And now we need to go ahead and work out y by splitting this up. So y plus 5 is either equal to 2, in which case y is equal to minus 3, or y plus 5 is equal to minus 2, in which case y is equal to minus, five, minus 7. So it looks like this here would have the coordinate 10 minus 7, but this coordinate up here, the one that we're looking for, would have the coordinate 10 minus 3. Okay. What I'll do here, it does say explain your solution, so what I'm going to need to write here is reject y equals minus 7 as the coordinate Ten minus three will give a positive gradient. So whenever it asks you to explain something, you are going to have to write a sentence. It's not worth just showing it mathematically and, and hence just crossing one of them out. So you do have to write a sentence. OK, part C, we had the coordinate 10 minus 3, and we had the um, centre of our circle at 4 minus 5. OK, so find the equation of L2 
giving your answer in the form mx plus b. So m2 is this one here. So I believe the way that we have to approach this is this is going to be at a right angle to this line here. So work out this gradient, use a little trick to get the right angle gradient as well, and then plug in that coordinate there. So what I need to work out first is the gradient of AQ. And then I'll do the trick to get the right hand gradient. So gradient is change in Y over change in X. So if I'm going from A to Q, it's going to be 4 to get up to 10. So that's going to be um, a gradient of 6. No, that's the, that's the X one, isn't it? Uh, minus 5 up to minus 3, that's going to be my, uh, plus 2. Because if it's minus 5 to minus 3, we go up 2. And if we're going from 4 up to 6 for the X values, that's going to be 6 on the bottom. So the gradient here is 1 third. And then for the gradient of L2, we do the whole trick of minus 1 over the other gradient, which is a third. So this is going to be minus 3. Dividing by thirds, the same as timesing by 3. OK, so now we've got Y. Uh, that's our value of M, the gradient of our line. So you can see here, it looks and matches up visually to what we've found here. Negative gradient, quite a steep one, so minus 3. So from here, we can then plug this into minus 3x plus b. So I've just taken this equation here, used my value for m as minus 3. And then I'm going to have to use a coordinate that lies on the line of L2. So I can't use 4 minus 5, that's not on L2. It's, I can only use this one here of 10 minus 3. OK, so let's just remind myself, x is the first coordinate, y, uh, my 10, and y is the coordinate, minus 3. So I have to put the minus 3 in the y position, and minus 3, lots of 10, plus b. So that would be third, minus 30. Add the 30 onto the other side, and you get 27 equals b. So therefore, y equals minus 3x plus 27. OK, great. So uh, moving on to the next part, part B. So let's remind ourselves minus 3x plus 27, centre of my circle of 4 minus 5. And Q here is the coordinate 10 minus 3. And we had a gradient here of a third. Right, uh, APBQ, APBQ, okay, so this thing here forms a square, um, find the equation of L1, so this one here, uh, in the form y equals mx plus b. So from the fact it's a square, I know that these two lines, P, B, and A, Q, are going to be parallel. So I know my gradient is going to be a third. That was nice and easy. And I then need to find a coordinate that I can plug into that line there to work out B. Um, I think it'd probably be easier to find Q here. Now, if I've got a square here, then this, this bit here must have this, a similar vector. So using the diagram to help me here, for the x coordinate, I've gone right by 6. So that probably means I'm going to be going up by 6. And in the diagram here, I've also gone up by 2. So here I'm going to have to go left by 2. So the way I'm going to work out p is sort of like using vectors. I'm going to take the starting point of a, 4 minus 5. And I'm going to effectively then add on a vector, uh, so moving it left by 2, so minus 2, and up by 6, so the 6 pops into the vector there. So working this out, I'm going to get um, 2 and 1. <clears throat> so my coordinate for P is 2, 1. So using Y equals MX plus B, M I found earlier, which was a third X plus B. And I'm now going to plug in the coordinate 2, 1. Just remind us that 2 is the x coordinate, 1 is the y coordinate. So it's 1 over here equals a third of 2. So 2 thirds add b. Uh, 1 take away 2 thirds is a third. 
So the equation of this line here is y equals a third x plus a third. Okay, great. Uh, final parts of this question here. Uh, the line L1 intersects the y-axis at E. So this here, let's just remind ourselves that that was a third x plus a third. Uh, find the A of the triangle E, P, A. So this area here. Okay, the easiest way I can see to do this is to identify we have a right angle triangle here. Now the distance from A to P, uh, I worked that out earlier, was a vector of um, minus 2, 6. So the magnitude from A to P is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared which is uh, 4 plus 36, that's the square root of 40. And then the next part is to get the distance from E to P. So the coordinate um, P was, um, let's just go back one, the coordinate for P was 2, 1. So it'd be 2, 1, take away the coordinate for E. Now that would just be the y-axis intersection of this great this line here, so that's going to be zero a third. So what I've done there is I've used the rule that if you want to get from e to p, you just do coordinate p take away coordinate e. And when I do this subtraction, I'm going to get two and two thirds. So to get the distance from e to p. So I'm introducing a lot of vectors notation here now, so feel free to link the two topics together. It's going to be 2 squared add 2 thirds squared, uh, just from the uh, little right angle triangle here. And what I'm going to get there is the square root of 4 plus 4 over 9. Um, 4 is a fraction of 9 is 36, add on... 4 is 40 over 9, so this is going to be the square root of 40 over 3. I'll probably leave it like that because I've got a square root of 40 there and there, so that'll make things easier. So now what I'm going to do is half of the base times height. And the only way I can use this formula is if there is a right angle triangle involved. And there is, because I've got the... Um, tangent is L1 and the radius is AP. So I can do that. So it's going to be a half times the base, which was EP. So that was 40, square root of 40 over 3, times by the height, which was square root of 40. This works quite nicely, actually. So square root of 40 times square root of 40 is 40 over 2 times 3 is 6. So simplifying the fraction there, 220 over 3 units squared. Great, wow, what a question. Finishing the paper as well, 19 marks.